Hi, I'm Javila. In this video, I'll show you how the Squiz Component Service helps you decrease development time by giving your developers more speed and flexibility in how they build web components so your organization can quickly respond to customer needs or market changes. So what I'll do first is I'll show you the component service in the DXB console. We can see all the components here that have been built for this organization. This is useful for developers to see all components that are currently live and accessible by content editors. If a component is being used anywhere on your sites, then it will be coming from here. Then we have these component sets, which are used to group components together so they can be accessed by different design systems or separate websites. I'll look at this university component set. Each design system can contain as many components as you'd like. Being able to set up these component sets with different component libraries allows us to better control the evolving needs of the business by governing what websites or design systems have access to which components. I'll open this hero banner component. On each component page, we can see the versions available for this component. So your organization can govern what versions of this component have been released. It also includes which component sets this component is available on. So this really helps digital teams govern where this component is being used. And we can preview the component right here for, through the component service. And usually you can interact with the preview as well. So I'll go back to my university sets and I actually want to deploy a new component here. So I'll open up the Visual Studio Code to show a component I've been building locally after I pulled it from our central Git repository. Here are a list of all the components that you saw listed on the DXP console, and then there is this new one here called Course List. First, what I'll do is I'll show you the manifest.json. The editing interface and development are separate, and the manifest.json files help to maintain that. Developers only need to describe editing fields in this industry standard JSON schema, and this makes development faster, simpler, and less risky. Here you can see my display name, the description that will appear in the component service. I've also added an icon already so that when they're going through the component list, they can see an icon for this course listing. And then what's important here is what is allowed for the input for our content editors. As we can see, I've already added a heading that will appear in the component and some introductory text. What I'm gonna do next is add what course data the content editors can add to this component. I'll add my code here. Cool, and now we can see what content editors can add. They can add a title, they can add the school name, they can also add a URL and an image URL. Then I'll just cross-reference these field in the template file that I have for my courses. And here I can just make sure that all of the fields are appearing in the HTML template that will be displayed with the component. The last file that I'll show you is the main.js. This is a JavaScript file that controls the look and feel of the courses listing by running server-side functions. Developers can build components using modern developer tools of their choice, whether it's JavaScript and React. And here you can utilize any framework or templating library that you like to develop in. This is one of the main benefits of the component service that gives your developers flexibility to build how they want to, to truly come as they are, and you won't risk losing your skilled developer workforce when you change platforms. And because the code is stored in your central code repository, it enables multiple developers to share the load. Okay, I'll open up a terminal and I'll run the component service locally to test it is working with the example content that I have. Okay, this pulls up my local host and I can see if I'll just reset my zoom here, I can see my component, this is how it will be displayed. We have my image and my text there and the heading and the school name, everything you saw that manifests that JSON file. Okay, next we can go ahead and deploy this. All right, once that deployment finishes, we should be able to see the component right in, in our all components. And there it is right in our all components. And I can open up this course listing and I can see right there, I've got my title of the versions and the same preview that you saw when you were working locally. What I'll do next is I'll actually add this to my university component demo set. And I can choose the version that I want to be used. With, for this example, I'll just use the latest version. Great. 
Now, my university sites that have this design system set on them will be able to use the course list. I'll show how content editors use this component in the Squiz content management system. And I'll show this on a page of my university site that is already using the university components. I'm currently using two of those components we saw in the component set, the hero banner and the testimonials. And I'll just show you the live page of what we have so far. There it is, we have our hero banner and the testimonials. And I'm going to add the course listing just between those two components. So now the content editor can now select this course listing from the list of components through the CMS. And there it is, and this, this is exactly how it looks in my manifest.json. We have the title, introductory text, and the course details that we added just now. I'll go ahead and fill content now. All right, that looks good. I'll save it and go back to my, main, my live page. And there is my course listing component that we developed locally, deployed to the component servers, and is now available for content editors to use. And our content editors can now spend less time custom editing and worrying if the content is formatted correctly because the component service takes care of that. All right, so that was a very quick look at how the component service helps you decrease the cost and development time by giving your developers more speed and flexibility in how they do what they do. If you want to see a deep dive into how content editors and digital teams use the component service or more developer resources when building these components, book a demo with our team to see it all in action. Thanks.